Hi everyone. Uh, as you learned in the circular flow diagram video, you can measure uh, GDP or the size of the economy three different ways. You can look at total amount of income generated, the total amount of stuff produced, or you can go ahead and just look at the total amount of um, expenditures in the economy. Turns out this third way is going to be the most important one that we use throughout the course, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time clarifying things. So first, some abbreviations. We're going to use capital Y as our abbreviation for gross domestic product. That's pretty typical in macroeconomics. Your book follows the same convention, and that's the one I'm going to use as well. So that's just going to be total amount of GDP, or the total amount of expenditures, or total amount of income generated. So at times you're going to hear me refer to Y is GDP, you might hear me refer to it Y is income, or you might hear me refer to it as Y as output. It's because if you think in terms of the circular flow diagram, all three of those things are exactly the same, so there's no real difference. Right? Next, there's going to be four expenditure categories. There's going to be consumption expenditures, so this is consumption. And this is household consumption. So this is exp expenditures by people like you and me. If we go out, we buy a car. If we go out, we buy clothes. We buy food. We get a night in a hotel. We go on vacation. All those things are consumption expenditures. So these are things that um, you spend money on them, and you get the benefit for them immediately. Now, there's two basic types of consumption expenditures that we might talk a little bit later on. There are durable goods non-durable goods, and services. So services are things like hotel services. You rent a hotel room for 100 bucks a night. You're getting the service. You're consuming the, the service right as you um, purchase the good. Non-durable goods are goods that last less than, say, three years, is, I believe, the government's official distinction. And they're things like food, where if you buy, you know, a bag of apples, you're probably going to eat that within a year, or you're probably going to eat that within three years, more or more than likely within a few days. So these are goods that don't last very long. They're, they tend to be bought and then consumed in a relatively short period of time. Durable goods are things like cars, refrigerators, household electronic appliances, things like that that are expected to last longer than three years. Okay? So consumption also happens to be the largest category of expenditures, so you might hear people saying consumers drive the U.S. economy. And to some extent that's true. Consumption expenditures are a little bit more than 70% of GDP right now. All right, well let me erase a little bit about this. So we've got consumption. In addition, we also have the next big category is investment expenditures. Now, one of the things that might make economics a little confusing, and especially for those of you who know a little bit of finance, is we don't use investment in the same sense here as uh, you would in a finance class. So for us, investment is not the purchase of a stock or a bond. It's the purchase of a capital good. So these are things such as computers, factories, machines, robots, assembly lines, all those things that are used to produce other goods and services. So that's generally what we're thinking of when we say investment. We're talking about investment in new capital goods, not investment in stocks and bonds. So I would call purchasing stocks and bonds financial investment, building a new factory, that's investment in the sense that I'm using the term. And in this course, we're going to go ahead and define investment. Basically, three different uh, types of expenditures are uh, investment. They're either new plant and equipment, which is the one I was just talking about. Inventories, turns out, are part of investment. Your book talks about why, but if uh, a firm spends a billion dollars this year building up its inventories of cars or food or cars or of computers, then that's considered investment. Um, likewise, if during the course of the year, the company lets its stock of um, cars or a uh, stock of, um, uh, let's say, in uh, goods and services selling fall by a billion dollars, then inventory investment would be negative one billion. And last, new residential construction. So if a house is bought this year and sold to the first uh, 
owner who's going to occupy it, that would count as investment expenditures. Now, investment expenditures are usually between 15 and 20 percent of GDP. All right, so those are the first two major categories, which are consumption and investment expenditures. And now we're going to talk about government expenditures. And these are on goods and services. On goods and services. Okay. Meaning, these are expenditures that when the government makes them, it gets an actual honest to God good or service in exchange for its money. So, for example, the government goes out, it builds a road, the government's getting the, role, the road, so those expenditures count as part of um, government spending. If the government goes out and buys a tank, it's getting a tank in exchange for the money it spent on it. Therefore, it's, uh, that spending on the tank is counted as government expenditures. However, not all government expenditures um, are on goods and services, so not all of them will directly affect GDP in this way that we're going to talk about in a minute. So for the classic example of those would be things like unemployment insurance. If you're unemployed, the government's giving you money, and by definition, you're not producing a good or a service. So expenditures on things like unemployment would not count as part of government expenditures here. In fact, we would call things like unemployment insurance, welfare payments, Social Security, um, all those types of it, spending we actually call transfer payments, and we'll talk more about those later on in the semester. But the important point to remember right now is there's basically two types of government spending. One, government expenditures on goods and services, roads, tanks, bridges, that type of thing. We're going to label as G, and it's going to be a component of gross domestic product. The other type of government spending is transfer payments, uh, and these are expenditures that the government gets no good or service in exchange for, and we'll talk about transfer payments later on. All right, so let's erase this. So government spending is the third category of um, expenditures. And the last but not least is NX for net exports. Which just means, if you think about things from the point of view of the United States, you just say net exports equal exports. All the goods and services that the U.S. Um, exports to other countries minus imports, which is all the goods and services that the United States imports from other countries, whether it's Japan, Mexico, uh, chi uh, China, Cor Korea, Canada, wherever. All right. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this right now, but if net exports are greater than zero, then that's a surplus, trade surplus. So right now, China has a trade surplus. So that just means it's exporting more goods and services than it's importing. If, on the other hand, that exports are less than zero, then you've got what we call a trade deficit. So today, the US economy imports more goods and services than it exports. Therefore, we're running a trade deficit. All right. So. These are the basic categories of expenditures. It's just um, these four, consumption, investment, government, and net exports. And all together, they're going to make up GDP. And I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and point out uh, an important equation we're going to use repeatedly in this course. And it's just this. Expenditures on, or excuse me, the total amount of um, expenditures in the economy, or GDP, or the total amount of income that gets generated, is just going to equal the sum of consumption plus investment plus government plus net exports. And for the size of the economy to increase, either consumption expenditures have to go up, investment expenditures have to go up, government spending on, or government expenditures on goods and services have to rise, or net exports have to rise. One of those four things has to happen for the economy to expand. Okay? And so later on in the course, when we build a model called of aggregate demand and aggregate supply side of the economy, we're going to be talking a lot about this. And we'll be talking a lot more about it thoroughly really throughout the semester. So this is a pretty important equation. You should, it's one of those things you should just go ahead and mem memorize. So it's GDP equals consumption plus investment plus government plus net exports. All right, so that ends what I wanted to talk about for this just basic accounting identity. It's a very important for one for you to remember, and as I said, we'll come back to it repeatedly over the semester.